Hello, I'm Professor Afshar at Glendale Community College. This is Physics 101, Lecture 42. In this lecture, we'll discuss the cross product. This topic is covered in Chapter 11, our textbook by Surway and Joet. In this lecture, we want to discuss a new mathematical operation between vectors. In the past, we've talked about how two vectors can be added. We've talked about how two vectors can be subtracted. We've talked about the multiplication of a vector by a number or a state or quantity. We've also talked about one way to multiply vectors together. That was the dot product, also known as the scalar product of two vectors. Here we want to introduce a second way in which vectors can be multiplied together. This second method is known as the cross product or the vector product. So imagine you have two vectors, I'm calling them vector A and B. If you take the dot product of vectors A and B, what you get is a number, a scalar quantity. That's why the dot product is also known as a scalar product. If you take the cross product of vectors A, A and B, you get a third vector, a new vector, which I'm calling C here. For this reason, the cross product is sometimes known as a vector product because the output that it produces, the product, is a new vector. Now we want to know what this new vector is, and of course, like all vectors, it's going to have a magnitude and an orientation. The magnitude of this new vector is a, b sine theta. So to figure out the magnitude of the cross product, you take the magnitude of a, take the magnitude of b, multiply those by the sine of the angle between a and b, and that gives you the magnitude of vector c. What about the direction of vector c? Well, c is designed to be perpendicular to both a and b. So whichever way vectors a and b point, find a third direction that is perpendicular to both of them, and that will be the direction of vector c. Of course, there's going to be some ambiguity there. You might be thinking, well, there's more than one direction, specifically two directions that might be perpendicular. To choose between those to remove the ambiguity, we use the right-hand rule. The right-hand rule is basically just a convention for figuring out which way vector C is going to be pointing. To use the right-hand rule, you start with your right hand. Your index finger points along the direction of vector A, whichever way that's pointing. Your middle finger should point in the direction of B, so that's the second um, item in the product. And then you stick out your thumb, and the direction of your thumb will tell you which way C is pointing. So your thumb will be equal to A cross B. So this is the vector product or the cross product of two vectors A and B. Notice that we're using the right-hand rule to um, calculate the cross product of two vectors. The right-hand rule should sound familiar to you because we used the right-hand rule also when we were talking about angular velocity. Recall that when we were talking about, for example, the rotational motion of a disk as it spins, we could figure out which way its angular velocity points by using uh, a slightly different version of this right-hand rule. So the right-hand rule turns out to be quite common in the study of rotational motion, and there are several different flavors of the right-hand rule. You're free to use whichever one you want, but you do need to pick one and know how to use it well. So the version that I first introduced to you on the previous slide is the one that's shown here. According to this right-hand rule, um, your index finger points in the direction of the first vector, your middle finger points in the direction of the second vector, and then your thumb points in the direction of the third vector or the cross product vector. This is one way of doing it, but here is another way of using the right-hand rule. It's the same operation, just a different way of remembering which way C points. For this right-hand rule, you take your four fingers and initially you just point them or direct them along vector A, and then you curl your fingers towards vector B as if you want to swing vector A into vector B. 
as your fingers curl from A to B, you open up your thumb, and whichever way your thumb is pointing, that'll be the direction of vector C. A third method is to start with your thumb pointing in the direction of A, have your four fingers or maybe just your middle finger pointing straight out along vector B, and then imagine pushing with your palm, whichever way the palm of your hand is pushing, that'll be the direction of vector C. You can use any one of these or even invent your own right hand rule, but pick one that you like and then consistently start using it. We'll be talking about the cross product quite a bit, so you'll have to be able to calculate the direction of the cross product easily. To calculate the direction of the cross product, you have to use the right hand rule. To figure out the magnitude of the cross product, you use a relatively simple formula, AB sine theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors that you're trying to multiply. To use that formula correctly, you have to know how to find the angle between two vectors. We've had this discussion before, I'm repeating it here because it's important. To find the angle between two arbitrary vectors, remember to place the vectors tail to tail. So the vectors have to be in a certain specific configuration where their tails are coinciding. Then the quote unquote angle between the two vectors is going to be the smallest positive angle between those two vectors. So if you have this green arrow and this blue arrow, two vectors, and I ask you what is the angle between them, you should first move one of them so that their tails coincide, so that they're both kind of starting at the same point. And then you can say the angle between them is 40 degrees. This is the smallest positive angle between these two. You should not say 140 degrees. You should not say minus 40 degrees and you should not say 320 degrees. Now occasionally if you make a mistake you might be saved by the fact that there are certain trigonometric identities that relate the sine of an angle to the sine of 180 degrees minus that angle and similarly uh, for cosine. So if you want occasionally you can use these trigonometric identities to simplify your calculations but you don't really have to if you know how to find the angle between two vectors correctly. So remember this procedure well. The cross product has some important uh, properties that we must be familiar with. Um, its first important property is the fact that it is anti-commutative. What that means is that a cross B is not equal to B cross A, it is equal to the negative of B cross A. This is a somewhat strange property because most other types of multiplication are commutative. For example, the type of multiplication you're most familiar with, the multiplication of real numbers, is commutative. What that means is that 3 times 4 is equal to 4 times 3, for example. The dot product, which we learn about back in chapter 7, is also commutative. More precisely, a dot b is precisely equal to b dot a. So the order in which you multiply things is not important, but when it comes to the cross product, the order in which you multiply things is important. If you reverse the order, you have to multiply by a negative one. This property is known as the anti-commutativity of the cross product. Another useful property is that the cross product has a multiplication table. Um, in fact, when you learn about scalar multiplication, things like 3 times 4 and 3 times 5 back in maybe second grade or third grade, you had to multiply, you had to memorize a multiplication table in order to be able to multiply bigger numbers. Well, the cross product also has its multiplication table. It's a relatively simple multiplication table. It's a 3 by 3 multiplication table. It's simple because it only involves the multiplication or the cross product of the basis vectors i hat, j hat, and k hat. Remember, i hat is a vector that has a length of 1, so it's a unit vector, and it points in the x direction. j hat points in the y direction, 
and k hat is also a unit vector pointing in the z direction. The cross product of i and i is going to be zero. This should make sense because the angle between vector i and itself is zero and sine of zero is zero, so ab sine uh, theta will be zero. The cross product of i and j will be k, the cross product of i and k will be minus j, and you can read through the rest of this table, always read it as row cross column, and once you have figured out or maybe memorized this table, then in principle, at least, you can calculate the cross product of any two vectors that I give you. A mnemonic that people often use to memorize this table is this multiplication circle. The circle tells you that as you follow the direction of these arrows going clockwise, I cross J is K j cross k is i and i cross j is k so you basically go in a circle and you can multiply any two of these to get the third one you can also go backwards opposite the arrows but then everything is going to be a negative so j cross i is a minus k i cross k is a minus j uh, and k cross j is a minus i so this is just a mnemonic, it doesn't really explain the table, but it's a convenient way to memorize this table. Perhaps the most important property of the cross product is this formula here. In fact, many math textbooks begin their discussion of the cross product by this formula here. If you really want to know the components of the cross product of A and B, you have to use this complicated formula. This entire thing, a sub y, b sub z minus a sub z, b sub y, is the x component of vector c, which is the cross product of a and b. This entire thing here is the y component, and this entire thing here is the z component. I'm not going to tell you where this formula comes from. I won't be deriving it in this class. That's really a discussion appropriate for your math class. And I'm not even going to ask you to memorize this formula. I would give you this formula on an exam. I would just expect you to know how to use it to calculate the cross product of two vectors. Let's end this lecture with a practice problem. Vector A has magnitude 2 and vector B has magnitude 1.5 as shown in the figure. Calculate their cross product. So we have these two arrows or two vectors. We have some angles here and we want to know what the cross product is. Remember, to calculate the cross product, you need two pieces of information. You need basically the magnitude and orientation. The magnitude is easy to calculate. The magnitude of the cross product is simply the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times sine of the angle between them. Magnitude of A is 2. That's given to you. Magnitude of B is 1.5. And the angle between A and B is not 60 degrees. Remember to calculate the angle between two vectors. You should move them. You should reconfigure them so that they are tail to tail. So I would maybe choose to move vector A and drop it off over here. And then I can see that this must be the angle between A and B. And there turns out to be 120 degrees, since this entire angle here is 180 degrees. Now I can put everything into my calculator and find that the magnitude of A cross B is 2.598. Incidentally, you should know that physicists often use the absolute value symbol to denote magnitude. Uh, remember that magnitude is always a positive number, so when you see the absolute value sign, around the vectors, remember that we're talking about the magnitude. Now this is the magnitude, but which way does this vector point? For this, you will need the right hand rule. So take your right hand and um, stick out your index finger horizontally along vector A. This is going to require that you reorient maybe your wrist or your entire arm a little bit. This takes a little bit of gymnastics with your fingers. Uh, take your middle finger and point it in the direction of B and then stick out your thumb and as you do, 
you notice that your thumb points away from the screen of your computer. Uh, we describe that as saying it's out of the page. So A cross B has a magnitude of 2.598 and it's pointing out of the page. We sometimes also describe that as the Z direction, the positive Z direction. Uh, but if you want to simply describe it as out of the page, that would be adequate. Here's a, another cross product. This time I'm not giving you a picture. Instead, I'm giving you the components. So vector A, a different vector, has components 3, 1, 0. Notice we're talking about three-dimensional vectors here. And vector B has components 0, 0, and 5. So its x is 0, its y is 0, and its z component is 5. Tackling the cross product of these two vectors is a little bit trickier because we don't really have a picture. We don't know what the angle between them is. We don't know the magnitude. We can figure out some of that stuff, but it's probably easier if we now use that long formula that I showed you on the previous slide. According to that formula, A cross B is given by this long formula. We now need to plug in numbers. As you can see, A sub Y is going to be 1. B sub Z, that's the Z component of B, is going to be 5. A sub Z is going to be 0. B sub Y is going to be 0. Uh, all of that will give you the X component. And then you'll have to similarly plug in numbers for all of these other ones. You'll find that for the X component, you'll get 5 minus 0 after you've multiplied the things out. For the Y component, you'll get 0 minus 15. And for the Z component, you'll get 0 minus 0. If we simplify that, we can say that uh, A cross B can be written as 5 comma minus 15 comma 0. This type of a problem is not very difficult. The algebra is relatively simple, but you should do a fair amount of practice with it because there's a lot of room for careless errors and you want to make sure you iron out those wrinkles in your homework problems. And that's the end of this lecture. Thank you for your attention.